Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I have a very special guest today. I have the one and only the legendary performer, Sean Michaels. Sean, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I definitely appreciate uh, this, this opportunity to talk to you and uh, to the world. Yeah. Um, so we've been trying to uh, get this uh, <laughs> interview going for a while. We tried before I had the baby and then I know you had a computer issue and then like we almost didn't make it this time, but we persevered and Sean, uh, and Sean is here and I'm so excited because um, I actually have, I have a bunch of questions for you. My Patreon members have a bunch of questions for you. So there's been a lot of people looking forward to this episode. So I guess let's start at the beginning. Tell us about how you got into the adult industry. Mm. Uh, well, um, I believe it was the year, how, um, I'll stop the year first was 19, 1989, 90. And how is, is that I wanted to, like probably most individuals who enjoy adult entertainment, um, experience it for myself. Um, so I wanted to give it a try. And that was my reasoning for, for enter, entering the business was just to try it out to see if I could even do it. Um, and um, uh, again, that was the year 1989, 1990. And I believe my first seeing a movie was was for a gentleman and a friend actually um he used to go by uncle buck back in the day as a director uh and um one of my first scenes was with rachel ryan um and what an honor to be perfectly honest you know you guys do your homework on rachel ryan you'll see how deep she is in general and how much in, it was important for her to work with a brother like myself coming in who's new, um, especially combating racism, which I also wanted to see if I could do something about as well. So uh, I, I was still working part-time as a nurse and doing porn jobs here and there. It's uh, sets for your mom, uh, photo sets for your mom's photo sets for certain people. That's kind of how it started initially. And then, uh, as I said, uh, uh, Uncle Buck, um, as a director, Jim Talmadge was his stage name, um, uh, gave me a lot of opportunities and kind of said, hey, you know, you're going to be all right. And that's because, you know, you, you seem to enjoy it for the right reasons. And then I figured out those reasons 10, 15 years later. Yeah. So, so yeah, my, you are definitely a favorite of my mother's. So I've known you, um, a long time and, um, what were, tell our audience a little bit about what it was like to maybe shoot magazine layouts back then, because things are so different now and nobody even really shoots for magazines anymore. I mean, you never had have a day of just stills now. So right. what, how was the industry different back then? It was, uh, it was, and, and this was delightfully so, it was more compartmental back then because, you, again, you, you would go and have just a day of shooting stills, which would be completely different from going on a set and shooting video and flying to Europe and shooting film, believe it or not, um, 35 millimeter as well. But it was the experience uh, was great because it taught me a lot um, about the aesthetics of what I was doing how I needed to control my body in a different atmosphere because a still set is a completely different atmosphere than a video set. Um, just usually there's a lot less people on a still set, which right there, you're a lot more comfortable. Um, and uh, you can be more intimate with your partner because for me, that's how it works. I, I can't just do a scene. Um, I have to, have some, some sort of connection with my partner. Um, and in the beginning, yes, I've done scenes without really getting to know my partner in the beginning because I didn't really know how to navigate my own self overall. But once you figure that out, I knew that I needed, I always needed to make some kind of connection with my partner and through what conversation, idle conversation that would happen through 
a look that we would give each other that would happen. Um, but but being on a set um, of stills would was in, very interesting to me because I'm also an artist. I, I draw, I paint, I sculpt. Not too, you know, great with the camera. I'm okay. Um, but um, I saw your mom's vision and 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 what she was trying to portray, you know, uh, and that was such a delight to get a message from her. Hey, what are you doing? I got a set for you. You know, I was like, well, that's going to be a good day. And, you know, as a performer, you look for your, you want your good days because yeah, like any other gig, you have bad days, but usually, you know, your mom made the difference for me because she showed me that, uh, the, the adult industry could have a, a class, a professionalism, a sense of humor, uh, and, and still be as sexy as hell. And those are kind of the things that I learned from her being able to drop my pants <laughs> in front of strangers, <laughs> you know, because to be honest, I'm a little bit on the shy side. But when you're a performer, when you're an artist, that shyness goes away. Um, mm. And you're artistic side comes comes forward so it, working on still sets uh, as particularly for you with, with your mom uh was always pleasant a pleasant educating experience some of her most iconic sets um were with you and specifically i remember um w i think it was you and sylvia saint right on like the white bed with all the white sheets and i still see that peppered and stolen and repurposed on the internet. Um, but that's definitely like one of her most popular sets. Do you remember anything about that day or what it was like working with Sylvia Saint? Not only do I remember pretty much everything about that day, it is indelibly, you know, ingrained in my in my memory banks uh, and, and in my heart because when it was a perfect storm of a set for me because I, I had, you know, a director, your mom, an artist, your mom, a person who cared, come in, who, who, come in, who cares about your mom, who cares about the, the talent, really cares about her talent, really cares about talent, really cares about what she's doing. And so it was like, it was like an overload for me to, to work for her in a pleasant way. And that day was special because it was Sylvia and Sylvia is, is and probably still is, I haven't talked to her in years, but a very, um, uh, how do I say it, 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 sensual person, but at the same time, it was more than that. It was more than the sensuality that, that connected, the connection we had anyway. And um, so, so that day was kind of magical, to, to, to be honest. Um, and I, I have uh, people still comment on that day uh, with social media, particularly about that scene. Uh, and and uh, and then, of course, I, I look for stuff out there, so I got pictures and stuff that I go looking for because I'm a fan of that that particular set. Um, and that's when you know it's good when you're you're a fan. And it's not just it was it's the whole look. You know, you look mm -hmm. at it. Wow, that's that's a great looking, you know, piece piece of work. So yeah, proud to be a, a part of that. Another one that sticks out in my mind is uh, your scene with Ashley Loren, which I think was her first boy girl ever in the, the airport security. Yeah, yeah. Scene. Do you remember that? Do you remember anything about that day? I, I do, I do. And, and uh, again, you know, um, it's interesting because, uh, especially now that we have a chance to 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 dwell within ourselves and kind of look back on things because we just have a lot of time to ourselves, I have to say, in our own spaces, you know, those kind of scenes really stick out because you, it, it really, for me, showed me that to have a scene of that caliber consistently, you need to make a connection of some, of some kind. It's not going to be like this every time, but that's okay to do this because everybody is different. Mm. So that kind of, you know, but that day was, was special too, because, um, you know, when you're, when you're working outside too, and you're, 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 you know, in, engaging with the public, uh, it really feels like kind of like a Hollywood feel because, you know, you're, 
you're out there. You, you're, you know, they, they, and they know you, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you're, Hey, Hey, Sean, you know, from everything, how do I get in the business or, you know, what was your last scene like? And, but again, being, being out and, 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 and being with the person you trust is trying to put the best of you forward. Uh, and you have a partner who, who, who gets you to, that's a, that's a, that's a special thing. So you, you mentioned about um, having a connection with your scene partner. How do you cultivate that connection? Is it something, and, and what do you do if you show up and, and maybe you guys aren't feeling it too much? Like, how do you correct that? Um, I start with just uh, human communication. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? Yeah. How do you like this? What do you like that? Uh, and, and not try to invade your space, uh, especially on set because everybody needs their space on set. I feel, um, and once I get, cause that, that'll give me a feel and a barometer about my partner for, for that day, because it has been days where I've gone to set and it wasn't so nice because mm-hmm. <laughs> my partner was for whatever reasons, not feeling that scene that day didn't want to be there shouldn't have been there <laughs> probably wouldn't have been there if they didn't need the money so yeah. but you as a professional you still need to make that look like because guess what you got several other people on that set that they that are counting on you to do your job mm-hmm. um n- never mind you know you can't get any kind of feel for this person and you have to actually be physical with them within an hour or so so it can be, it can be tough. Have you ever done a scene where you wanted to just walk off set? Cause you were like, this is not what I signed up for. Absolutely. I don't feel treated well, or maybe the girls really like, this is not right for her. And, and you didn't feel right participating in the scene. The movie is called black Mariah. <laughs> uh, I walked off the set. Uh, once I took a peek at the script, which was, uh, at the time I was working with a director who was like most directors at that time. And probably at this time was shooting a lot of adult content that was either black themed or racially themed, Mm. but they had no clue about those particular topics and those particular subjects. So in other words, they were just doing their job, getting paid. Here's your script, you know, do your job. Um, still probably my second year, third year in the business. So I'm on the rise and, you know, I'm doing okay. <laughs> I get to the set and mind you, before I get to the set, you know, director calls me up, oh, the script is great. You're going to like it. It's funny. Good. Because guess what? Sex and humor, so medicinal. Great, right? Mm-hmm. I get there, I take a peek at this script. Remember, it's out there. It's called Black Mariah, y'all. Check it out. Your boy <laughs> said, ain't having it. And Miss Dominique Simone, who's a friend of mine, said, Sean, what should I do? I said, honey, you got to make your own decisions, but you just take a look at that script and you got to make your own decision. I can't tell you what to do. You're a grown woman, but I'm leaving. I'm out. You see what I'm doing. So um, she stayed. She was actually on the cover, and 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 the cover was something that your mother would puke at mm. because it was this actor who who well he said he was my friend, but he appeared he was a, this this white cat from from New York actually kind of my neck of the woods, um and said and said you know he was always wanted to be a porn actor. This was great for him. He was a great opportunity, but he ends up in blackface on the cover of this, of this movie. Okay. And it's out there. Google it. It'll pop right up. Guarantee you. Anyway. So that's the movie that started just like, yo, you can't be, they going to try this on you. So get ready, especially you. Cause you knew, but you know, you, you know, you did you, you, you do right now, you know, you, you want to set the standard for the next 10 years if you do this right. Yeah. And thank God I, I did because people like Mr. Lexington Steele and 
you know, a bevy of other people who I admire and respect have told me so. And, mm-hmm. and it really touches me when my coworkers talk to me and tell me things like that because I, I'm a very private person. I stay to myself. I don't go out a lot. And just that's just how I am. I've always been that way since I was a kid. Uh, but I still enjoy the company of others when that happens. But I don't need to hear, hey, you're great in this all the stuff. You know, you you prove how you are through your, your actions and your works. So so when you hear things like, hey, I I got in because of you and you check you help, you know, and, and people, you know, your fans who support you say, hey man, you, you made a difference in, in our lives, married couples, single individuals, gay, bi, from here to Iran and back. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So were you kind of like already feeling a responsibility in like how you portrayed yourself in your image Absolutely. and thinking about how other people would look at you and, and what they would take from that? Growing up in America, I, I, I could not be blind to how I carry myself, especially if I was going to be on a public platform such as the adult entertainment industry. Right. Plus, my mother taught me better than that anyway, whether I was right. in the adult or not, I'd still be carrying myself just like you see. Yeah. In whatever movie you throw in, more or less. I mean, you can play characters and stuff, but pretty much 90% of the time you're going to see what you're seeing now, um, which is a genuine individual who cares about what they're doing, cares about who they're doing, <laughs> and cares about the, the end product. Um, because without our fans, let's face it, you know, we're, we're not here. So when you got that love, and it's not even about the Twitter numbers for me because I got hacked. I'm back to 17 followers now. Guess what? Homeboy did me a favor or homegirl, whoever they is out there who, who hacked me because my fans, once they find out I've been hacked, they're going to come back in droves. And the fact that all, I've also done a little crossing over here and there in the last two, three years with the transgender community and they going to find me again. So it's, it's you know, when you when you are on a mission, it's hard for people to stop you, you know, cause I'm on a mission. I've been on a mission since 1989 <laughs> and I'm still on a mission. So amen. Yeah. You've touched on so many subjects that I really want to dive into more deeply, but first we are going to take a quick commercial break and then we are going to come right back. So hang tight guys. If you're here, it's probably because you're a fan of my podcast, Holly Randall unfiltered. Well, that's great because I'm a fan of my podcast too. Now, if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a crowdfunding platform that allows people to make contributions on a monthly basis. Because this podcast costs money to make, maybe even more so than others. I'm obsessed with quality. So since the beginning, I have always recorded in a studio, had a professional sound engineer, and recorded professional video. All of these things cost money, as you can imagine. And I also made a pretty scary decision this year to cut down on my directing gigs so that I could focus more on this podcast, which is why I need your help now more than ever. But don't worry, I'm not asking you to give me something for nothing. In exchange for your contributions, I offer so many perks. For example, access to the live streams of all of my interviews, a bonus podcast that I do called My LA Porn Life, Q and A's where the stars answer your specific questions, behind the scenes interviews, merchandise such as mugs, shirts, and stickers, access to my private Snapchat, and so much more. You can join for as little as $5 a month and help me change the way the world sees the adult industry and sex work. So take a look around and see everything that I have to offer. I really hope that you'll join and be a part of our little community. Hello, everybody. We are back. So, Sean, um, you touched on two uh, important things that I really want to discuss with you. Um, Racism in the adult industry and then um, your work in the transgender community. So let's start with uh, racism. Is there racism in the adult industry and what can we do to correct that? And have there been any big strides that have been taken since 
the Black Lives Matter movement. I know that there's been a lot of discussion in the adult industry about, um, you know, all of these these issues that we've come across. I know that you spoke on a panel that I um, was watching very articulately. And uh, yeah, I just would love your insight on all of it. Thank you. Um, the answer to the first question regarding racism in the adult industry is yes. And my reasoning behind the answer yes is simply because racism in America and unfortunately probably in the world is institutionalized and ingrained in our societies, period. From 17, I I, I mean, I'm not trying to give a, a history lesson here, but we know the deal. The answer, in my opinion, um, is giving people the opportunity to prove themselves. Um, as much as the opportunities are given to the white individuals, period. Um, just like in the NBA and professional sports, they love black folks, don't they? Guess what? How many directors that are hired? by these companies, given the opportunity to produce, to create real black visions, not what somebody is sitting at home typing on their computer, what they think black, black this or that culture is. We are black, <laughs> right? So, so we know what it's like to be black. Give us the opportunity to show the world through our art what it's like to, instead of stagnating us, not giving us the opportunities, browbeating, I mean, just all this negativity, this, not just in porn, it's in all facets of society, unfortunately. So, <laughs> the idea that, that they're having white directors and white writers write movies with a black vision is what you're saying, right? Whereas correct. people like you should be directing those. But if, if, if you're going to do that, give the same opportunity to somebody else that's, that's, that's of color. They don't mm-hmm. have to be black. Mm-hmm. But give them the opportunity to be creative, to write also. If, if, if a white man's going to write for a black man, let a black man write for a white man. Or Asian, mm-hmm. Hispanic, a bloody body blah, blah, blah. So that's where I'm coming from. And I'm talking about let's heal the situation. We know what we need to, we know what's out there. What we need to do is understand, listen, really listen to, to everybody, listen to each other, and, and, and just trying to find a common ground. If a person can do a job, if they're qualified to do a job, give them the opportunity to do a job, period. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and just stop the hate, because that's really on the only thing that's going to, I mean, people connect through the adult industry sexually that's how they release that's great they love us for that and that's great i I love you back thank you thank you for allowing us into your homes and your private lives but 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 you know love us (laughs) away from that too you know otherwise you know we're gonna have to we're not only battling the coronavirus we could be battling another virus and Mm. it's just it can be it it can be and I just hate to say it, but it's just the old heads dying off and the youngins coming up, taking control. Because I'm going to tell you, the teenagers ain't having this shit. Because mm-hmm. I'm learning from my, my, my teenagers. <laughs> they ain't having it. It's going to change the world. So that's what's going to change the world is our future, is our kids. Okay. But we can give them a, 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 a foot up by doing it as much as we can while we're here to go, okay, let's get it ready for them because here they come. Next five to 10 years. You've been in the adult industry for, for a long time now. How many years? Oh, you already said, you said 19. It's going on 31 now. It's going on 31. Yeah. So, so how have you seen things change in the adult industry when it comes to racism? Have things changed? Are they better? Are they worse? Are they the same? They, 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 they are better somewhat. Um, 
but there's still a huge gap. Um, mm-hmm. and, I, and, I, and I say that again, and just the opportunities that are given, all people want are opportunities. They know, black folks know they need to be educated with, as writers, as producers, as directors, as it, whatever. They know that, that they need to be educated and qualified. They are that. Asians, Hispanics, I'm just saying the, the changes I've seen is yeah, yeah, okay, there's more opportunities given to them. But we need more because last summer was not fucking cool at all. Yeah. So we don't want to repeat that because it ain't gonna be pretty. Yeah. Uh, so 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 I've seen <laughs> on commercials, interracial couples on national TV, I've seen, I've seen it. I've seen something moving. I haven't seen that before. In, yeah. main, in our industry, we're still lagging. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, as much diversity as we as an industry put out there or, or, or claim to get be about, yeah, I don't see it within the inner workings. You know? Mm. Hey, and uh, I'm glad I was there because I believe in the beginning, 30 years ago, to represent black men, knew that I had to do it right, was concerned with it, and said, you know what, God, because I'm I believe in God. I don't go to church every Sunday, I'm not all religious, but I do believe in higher power than what's out what was around us. And I'm still here for a reason. So um I believe people have gotten my message because they even told me, hey. You help change da 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 da. When people help tell you you help change shit, especially when it comes to racism, and it, I, I got, I got, and thank you God, and thank you world for loving me because I got plenty of white folks who love Shawn Michaels. Great, that's that's a beautiful thing. But I also have plenty of Asians. I also have plenty of Hispanics. I also have plenty of bi, gay, Filipino. You name it. Usually, I mean, I've gotten. I'm just saying that this is a love and things that I've seen coming at me. So I know that I help change this motherfucker around, mm-hmm. whether they want to admit it or not. So they they always want they always want to wait till you're dead. So they go, oh yeah, that was the person who did this and that was no. Acknowledge the person while they're here, and 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 appreciate what 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 the, what they've done now. You know. That's the way to do it because I know the best way, in my opinion, to communicate with people on every nationality. I've done mm-hmm. it. Been successful doing it through a, such an intimate act as sex. So don't tell me I can't do it through verbal communication, online communication, because I'm about teaching motherfuckers, especially men. Yeah. Because... <laughs> Men need to know certain things, you know, and they because they always ask it. And I don't mind sharing with them, but guess what? Knowledge is, is power. And mm-hmm. and I don't mind sharing, but guess what, y'all? We ain't shooting as much as we used to. So go ahead and support a brother when it comes to certain things that I'm going to be doing in the future. Because I have a lot of information that can probably be of good service to y'all. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, um, like, diversity... Uh, you were very much a trailblazer in the fact that, um, you know, you worked with trans women, you know, back before it was, I I don't want to say accepted because I don't feel like it's accepted yet, but I feel like the adult industry is embracing it more, at least attempting to. Yeah. Sorry. Good. I am. I'm just all over it. (laughs) So, so yeah. So did you get backlash on that and, and, and how was that for you? I got bash black black ass, but understand Holly. Everything I do in the adult industry, specifically business wise, is strategically regimented and uh, uh, applied. In other words, when I saw my first T girl back in 1995 in Paris, I wanted to do it then. Blew my mind, but I said no. You're still new in the business. This will come later. Mm-hmm. Blew my mind. So 2018, I said. Time to push this button. Time to push the eject button. <laughs> I love spy movies. 
Sean Bond, <laughs> Thunderballs. But the point is, okay, you're on another mission. It's great. Now, you know, in, in, enjoy, you know, this, this ride of, 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 wow. Um, I, I, I don't know, Holly, it's just how people have received me and, and love me, just honestly, me being me. So, so, wow. <laughs> so basically like you're, are, are you saying then that you didn't do it with this kind of like agenda in mind? Like, okay, I'm going to do this because I'm trying to make a statement and blah, blah, blah. You did it because you wanted to do it and you're going to do what you want to do. Well, all of the above, because the love I'm getting from the transgender community are they're, they're real people. Right. Mm, so right. that's real love. So, um, and the people who love them. So, and the other reason I did it was because I wanted to, and because I wanted to show that it's okay if you as a male talent or any talent want to do what you want to do, just as long as you do it from the heart, because you're going to get judged no matter what you do in, in life, most of the time, especially scrutinized in the adult industry. So yes. Oh, oh gee, why did you do that? Da, 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 da. You were the OG. No, motherfucker, I'm still the OG. When you can find a motherfucker that's didn't mean scenes as me, including everybody. Maybe TT Boy. TT Boy's got me beat. I love you, TT. No, you got me beat. I'll give you that. I love you. <laughs> you got me beat. Other than TT Boy, you name somebody else is still working. And I'm just going to say it. They gave me best performer last year in the trans transgender community. That's love. I, I didn't. I, I did maybe five scenes when I first came out, but they saw the sincerity. They saw the, the commitment. They saw, yeah, this brother is doing it for the right reason. And the hypocrisy that I was speaking of earlier is that, guess what? Women in our industry can go do gay movies. I mean, straight up, just guys, fucking guys, and a chick goes in because we have that. Mm -hmm. They can go do trend. They can go do whatever they want to do and then come back to so-called mainstream porn and work with whoever they want. Male, female. People might say something, but they never get scrutinized like dudes. Mm. Right? So, but guess what's happening now? 2020. One. Mr. Michaels, how's that going over there? What's that? The transgender. It's seemingly fine. How, how, how can I possibly be down? Uh, you got to be coming from the heart. You mm -hmm. can't be doing shit just for the money. You can try. But even if you come, if you try, you got to be trying because you want to. It's sexy to you. It's a turn off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot more money. But if you do it right, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be just like doing any other scene because that's what it's like to me. When you got so the right, what, right person. Would you say that maybe like a secret to your longevity has been authenticity? Absolutely. Authenticity, creativity, and being driven. Mm. Being driven to want to better everything I do, um, everybody I do. <laughs> My female fans, uh, female co-workers, thank you so much for allowing me to be there with you for 30 years. Without you guys, I couldn't have did it either. So there's so many people to, to appreciate on this journey that I'm still on. Uh, but I know without certain female performers, uh, certain fans, your mom, God rest her in paradise, uh, your new baby, once they see Sean, they be like, yeah, that dude's cool. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Uh, but, you know, just sincerity. And, and I believe that's what people, in fact, that's what they tell me is that you, uh, it, it, this, is, this is the stigma that we have. You could do so much more than porn. Why? Mm -hmm. What Porn is great. Yeah, they get fucked over by society, but they're still, it's still great. You can never take that away from us, okay? It, and, and it's something that it takes a special person to do. Mm -hmm. consistently and do it well so when people from you know indonesia wherever around the world saying hey mr michaels and that's the only thing i like about facebook i'm gonna say i don't i don't give a fuck about facebook because i know they're selling us out but 
I still have an account on there because I can't really fucking get it off. They never want to let you off the fucking... I, yeah, I want to delete my account. You got to go through fucking hell to delete your account. Your account. But the other reason is I still do it is because I do still get people hitting me on there from all over the world. And I have relatives that still on Facebook. So I go get do your thing, but I just don't, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'm, again, private. I, I know it's a social job that I do, but we don't we need to be spied on as I feel that we are, you know, even in our homes and our devices. I really feel that we're being spied on. I mean, it's a fact. So <laughs> enjoy, but it's, it's just not, yeah, anyway. But yeah. I, I believe the reason that people still connect with Shawn Michaels is they see the genuine, the genuine person, the genuine article, um, and 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 that's what drives me. Period is is that I'm going to always tell you what time I think it is uh, in a cordial way, of course. If it calls for something different, I can do that too, if necessary. But I, I don't like getting my blood pressure up. It's not good for people, to get blood <laughs> especially when you're old. Fuck it. So, <laughs> ooh, um, just just people still want to relate to me because they 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 feel I'm real and I and I'm just being me. So that's the other thing about COVID, the great revealer. It reveals so much about everybody's character, so many other things in life. But it, it's allowing us to connect, also like never before, in my opinion. We are separated, but we're connecting like trying like hell to connect even even harder, of course. Yeah, I think COVID has forced us all to kind of hit the pause button on our lives and and look at our lives um, in a way that we never had to before. So it's been it's been interesting. So you look amazingly like your mom right now. By the way, I'm going to tell you that it's like. <laughs> <laughs> so well, thank good. you. My mother was a was a beautiful woman. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we are going to take a quick break. Then we're going to come back. I'm going to ask Sean about his advice for any men wanting to get into the industry. And then I have a couple questions for my Patreon members as well. So hang tight and we will be right back. Adam and Eve is your one-stop shop for everything sexy. Use code Holly to get 10 free gifts plus free shipping with any purchase. That's adameve.com. Use code Holly for 10 free gifts plus free shipping. Hello, everybody. We are back. And uh, Sean, I want to ask you a couple of questions from some of my Patreon members. Um, Dave W. asks, were you surprised when so many women accused Ron Jeremy of sexual harassment, or did you always suspect that he was a creep? Interesting question. Um. I always suspected something because my dream job would, would have been a meteorologist because I love weather, but I would have been a hell of a detective because I believe I would have been a good detective. When people tell me shit and when I see shit and it just doesn't, it's like, hmm, makes like Arsenio used to say, something that makes you go, hmm. It always made me go, hmm, brand new fucking girl saying this. It or that veteran saying this or that not good. So, so do I want to speak bad of, of Ron Jeremy? No. Cause I considered him as a friend. Um, will I always protect people who are, are, are in danger of being raped and, and doing shit against their will? You got damn right. So, so, People have told me, come to me, one person in particular said, hey, I got to tell you something. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, so what do you want to do? How do you want to handle this? Oh, don't worry about it. If he comes to get towards me again, I'll whip his ass. And I go, you probably would. So I just I left it at that because that's how she wanted to handle it. But I, I, I believe that Julia Ann said on Twitter that she had an incident with him and she actually, um, that you were there and she kind of reached out well, to you for well, some kind of protection. Petition to take star, adult stars down to hedonism in Jamaica. Yeah, that's what she was talking and they, about. Was great. Figured he's an icon in the business. Why not? He, oh, he was, oh, I always go down there. Sean, you should take me. Okay, come on, Ron, let's go. So I took him and several other stars down there for 10 days. One of these days, Julia comes to me and says, Sean, 
this motherfucker came to my room and I thought he wanted to talk to me about something about the business. And he came in and he acted like he wanted to fuck me. And I told him, motherfucker, if you don't get out of here, I'm going to kick your motherfucking ass if you if you're serious. So he supposedly, he left, she said. And I said, okay, so how do you want to handle it? She goes, I got it. Because he ain't going to play, she's not going to fuck with me because I let him know what time it was. And and then I, so I'm like, what the fuck, you know, dude? Do you do we need this as as adult performers, male performers? Oh, these dudes don't get enough on set. They got to go do shit like this. Mm-hmm. What the fuck was that? So when Julia told me that, I even went, Mm, even harder. So to answer your question, yeah, I always suspected something because I always I heard too much from way back in the day to when I became super relevant and and was doing shit with people and shit was still happening. I was, I was still hearing shit. Yeah, it's like when there's smoke, there's fire, and you know his behavior like that just casts such a pall over the entire adult industry and somebody like you who has, who is so beloved by your female co-stars and, you know, I can speak from experience and from what my mother has said, like, and you can even hear it from the way that you speak. Like you really respect the female performers and you're so polite and you're so like, I mean, you know, they've, they always say they feel safe with you and they really enjoy working with you. So that must be frustrating because you know, it, you feel like it's that that narrative the the mainstream's expecting, like, oh yes, of course, all male performers are predatory. When like that couldn't be further sure. from the truth. Sure. Every conservative person latched onto that and goes, "See, I told you." Yeah. See, I told you. Mm-hmm. He's not even black. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> if he was black, it'd be a whole lot different. I, yeah. I, you know, it would be a just a lot more severe. Unfortunately, America's showed me how they deal with shit. What would be the advice that you would give new male talent that's looking to get into the industry? Great. That's a great question, Holly. I'm going to tell you, thank you for that question because that has to happens to be the number one question this brother gets on particularly, Hey, you know, that question, how do I, you know, be the best me and my answer, I will share with you. Not that I will share with everyone because I'm going to tell these motherfuckers myself here shortly, but for me and what works for me, and I think will work for most males out there, especially everybody has insecurities. Let's understand that. Number one, everybody has them. It's how we deal with them that makes the difference. Taking a deep breath. When, as a male, when you want a, a, anybody's attention, but particularly a female that you're interested in or whoever that significant person you want to be in your life, be you. Be you. Because that's what they, well, they'll find out anyway what's the real you. But when you just come out and be you, that's what's going to be the, the barometer for me, whether this woman, and most women get it. They can read your ass right off the bat. So, so, you know, and I say that because I was raised by women. I learned a lot from women in every way, shape and form. They taught me how to be a better man. So, and that's having respect for your partner. Mm. To, to, enough to just be truthful who you are. If you work in an executive job, cool. If you work in as a trash man, cool. If that person's into you, they're going to be there. So be you. Um, it's, it's easy to say that because we all have things we're going to work on. Um, you want bigger this, you want better that, you know what? Hey, be glad for what you got. Work on it. Try to make it better. I always say that. Always work on yourself. Just physically get your work out in, keep your heart cardio, but, but keep your ass clean, keep a job. You show respect to people. You're going to be okay. When it comes to women, just be you. Period. Great advice. And then last question uh, from Michael. He wants to know who your top favorite five female performers to work with are. Ooh, I just put together a top 10, but okay, right off the bat, Nina Hartley. Love her, person, soul, spirit. She is the one who really said, Shawn Michaels, I got you. 
people, when, when you, if you need somebody to work with, because I know so she the one said, be careful. The, the industry is kind of like that. You need somebody to work with? Because when she said that, when you need somebody to work with, give me a call. I said, hmm, what does that mean? Then I found out what that meant. It was like, oh, you know, it's like that in the industry. Yes. Who do you want to work with? Miss Nina Hartley. I got this person for you to work with, Miss Nina Hartley. Why? Because Nina, first of all, she wanted to be there. She loves brothers. <laughs> but she loves people, period. Yeah. Uh, she's also a fellow health co worker, and I love that about her. But before that, she took me by the hand and said, okay, this is difficult. Your heart's going to be racing. The cameras are hot. But I'm hotter. Look at me. Focus on me. Always focus on the female. So Nina Hartley's number one. Number two, Chichalina from Italy, who was also in the parliament of Italy. That's where motherfucking America, you can take a page out of Europe. It's like, they respect their porn stars over there. Why? Because they're people who do a job just like anybody else does a job. But when you got the intelligence, you still respect it as a person. That's what I get from Europe. Europe embraced me like no other country in the world. I mean, not even my own country did. That's why I see how blacks went to Europe back in the day to get the recognition on as an artist or just as being seen as a human being. Because when you go there, it ain't about your color. Sure, you might yeah. get hits here and there, but they, if they, you're an artist, they got you. Mm. <laughs> and so, so thank you, Europe. Thank you, Chichalina. Thank you, I I Italian Parliament, for recognizing this brother. This, this was like in 1991, 92. Anyway, so um, Dominique Simone. Number three, um, my God, <laughs> uh, Angel Kelly. Angel Kelly, she she was a diva, first black woman, in my opinion, to do, direct and produce and do her thing in this business. Gave me inspiration to do my thing um, and, and, and elevate my mind and taught me a lot. Uh, and wow, at number five, it's just, it's just, wow. It's, it's, you know how many scenes I probably did? It, it, it's it's like I know that it's close to like seven thousand scenes. So wow, that's how many women, right? But the top five, it would have to be like a top one hundred. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know it's a hard question to answer. Right, the last person, um, I and y'all don't hate me because just it's just everybody got love like this. But I'm just gonna say this person because she's more of today, today's world, and she kisses me because kissing is so important in, in scenes that's what that's my Viagra because I've started doing this before Viagra y'all remember that <laughs> when you really had to be into it so yeah different world that's what got me going it was a kiss right so 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 but this person kisses like that I'm just gonna say she would definitely be in my top whatever but a belly danger so ah oh, okay so you're yeah. giving us a you're giving us a new girl well new girl but uh, current because because that's how that's my span right <laughs> to yeah. her and yeah. she showed me that kind of love and go hey you like to kiss huh I got you oh I love and, that <laughs> so when a young a, a nineteen year old person could do that to me you're doing something because yeah. I'm about I I like a certain style of women um and it's not about not liking a nineteen year old eighteen year old it's more about I want you to be more, not saying you're not seasoned in life at that age, but just face it, the older you get, the more experience you get, especially sexually. So in your 20s is a better yet age for me to, mm -hmm. if you want to experience this brother, i like for you to be at least in your 20s. So, um, because there's this big fascination with the older black men and younger white women. Really? Yeah. Well, just, no, it's a, sad, it's a serious taboo that y'all put out there. And Guess what? The reason younger women like older men is simply because, God damn it, we listen. We listen for real. They see the wisdom. They're attracted to that and other things as well. But just saying, that's that's what I get. Yeah. Yeah. When I was when I was younger, I liked older men, but now that I'm older, um and, and now, older men are, are quite old. <laughs> so oh girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sean, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. I'm so glad we finally got to do this. Um, as well. 
Can you let everybody know where they can find you online and uh, plug? Uh, you're starting a new website, right? Are you revamping? Sure. No, no, website? I'm just reactivating SeanMichaels.com because I do okay. reactivate it for a while because it was never a membership site, but now it is. And we're going to be relaunching it very soon. But to find out updates on that information, um, I relaunched my Twitter page, uh, Sean Michaels. Uh, SM Incorporated, and it's SM Incorporated, and I did that on person because most people, they were going to hack you. They would spell Incorporated correctly, wouldn't they? So I spelled it incorrectly. So it's okay. SM Incorporated, but the, the headline is still Sean Michaels 42. So you can okay. find me under either one of those titles. But then I'll send you my new link so you know exactly where to find me. And please push people, because I have... The people who follow me, because I'm not really into the following fucking thing, and I get it. I get it. It can equal this, that, and the others. But I want you to follow me as a genuine motherfucker. If you want to hang with me, this is how this is about. This is how I am. This is how I get down. But do it for a genuine reason. I'm not the people. Oh, I can get you fifty thousand followers. Oh, uh, you should have oh, some other yeah. followers. No, I, I'm glad because guess what? The people who follow me, I think they follow me. These are real motherfuckers who follow me. So it's like 38, 37, 38,000 people that were, uh, they still follow me. Once they find out, it's going to be even more. So, so you hacking motherfuckers, you do your thing. But, you know, get a real fucking job, okay? Because your shit sucks. Yeah, there's a difference between like number of followers and like active engagement. You know, you mm -hmm. can have, Mm -hmm. um, hundreds of thousands of followers, but if most of those followers are just bots, uh, that doesn't do you any good. Mm -hmm. So I, I hear what you're saying for sure. And, and so to answer your question, uh, Shawn Michaels Incorporated, uh, S actually SM Incorporated instead of Incorporated. So SM Incorporated and then Shawn Michaels 42. And then I'm going to start an Instagram page because I had one of those and then I took it down. I wasn't happy that it was Facebook, <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway because people like, dude, you need to do Facebook and it's a different format than actual Facebook. So I'm going to do a Facebook page and I'll launch it and I'll let y'all know through my Twitter that I'm launching it. And my only fans is, um, Sean 42, um, come show some love there. Cause it's kind of fun having a platform like that and to post your things, you know, cause People want to see pretty interesting things. And it's, it's just, sometimes it's not even sexual. You know, it's, it's nice. I like it. Yeah, it's just a way to get to know you. So your OnlyFans is OnlyFans.com uh, slash Sean Michaels 42? Uh, Sean, Sean, Sean 42. Okay. Yes. Sean 42. Okay. All right. Awesome. And you guys can follow me at Holly Randall on Twitter and on Instagram. If you want to support this Patreon and submit questions like the ones that I asked Sean today, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered. Thank you so much for joining us. Sean, again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. And I will see you guys next week. <laughs>